party last week and for two of her little ones a group party and she had passed these flyers out the very day she went missing reporting live downtown i'm kathleen o'toole first coast news all right kathleen thanks a lot stay with first coast news we'll have continuing coverage remember police are still taking your phone calls 24 hours a day on this case if you have information you can call police or call first coast crime stoppers and to find out more, check out our website at firstcoastnews.com. Now to our other big story tonight, a campus tragedy at Edward Waters College in northwest Jacksonville. 18-year-old Jonathan Glenn was supposed to be home in Chicago today. For the first time since August, he was finally going home to see his family, but he never made it. The honor student was shot and killed by a masked man during a robbery. He was walking with some friends to a dorm on campus around midnight. Today, students came together at a special memorial where Glenn was remembered as a young man with a very bright future. Flags also flew at half-staff on the tightly knit campus. First Coast News reporter Tiani Jones joins us now from Edwards Water. And Tiani, both of his parents are now here from Chicago. Just what terrible news for them. Yes, his parents are here along with his sister. And like you said, he was from Chicago. And Jonathan Glenn came here to Jacksonville to make this his new home. I talked with some of his friends, and they told me that they were looking forward to many years of a great college experience and last night definitely painted that. At first I heard two shots, and then I was like, well, maybe it's fireworks because everyone's celebrating because they're going home. Gunshots, screams, and in a matter of minutes, Jermaine Johnson was mourning the death of one of his closest friends. And I was on the ground, and I saw him. He was, like, shaking a little bit, like he was gasping for air. In a day and age when young black men die of violence at an alarming number, Jonathan Glenn's friends say he should have beat the odds. I mean, from day one, um, when I first met him, he, I just took him under my wing as my little brother. An honor student majoring in business but thinking of switching to communication, Glenn's friends tell us he was a young man bound for success. He had two plans. He wanted to either be a, a reporter or a chef. These young men know they've been dealt a hard lesson but say they'll press on in spite of their friend's death, possibly inspiring change in their community. Well, I can't just make, let something like that scare me because I know it wouldn't have scared him. He would have you know, strive to reach his goals and his dreams, so I'm going to do the same. Just to tell you a little bit about this young man, his friends tell us that he was a huge fan of Emerald and loved to cook, and that was one of his dreams. They also said he had a dream of having a television career, possibly combining the two. Reporting live from Northside, I'm Tiani Jones, First Coast News. So sad to see a life lost. And Tiani, as I understand, he was just walking with a couple other people. Did police think he was targeted, or they're just for sure it was random? We do not know the information on that yet, Jeannie, but from what his friends and from what witnesses have told us, they believe that it was random. They simply wanted his jersey. Mm, all right, thanks very much, Tiana. And stay with First Coast News for continuing coverage of the story. We've learned that Glenn just wrote a paper on campus security before his death. We'll have more on that coming up at 6 o'clock. And if you have any information that can help police on this case, call our news partner, First Coast Crime Stoppers. You can stay anonymous. Just call 1-866-845-TIPS. Cordial. That's how President Bush described his three-hour conversation with the 9-11 Commission this afternoon. The President and Vice President Dick Cheney were in the Oval Office together answering questions for the 10-member panel today. We won't really know what the President and Vice President said during testimony because it is considered private. It wasn't recorded, nor was it under oath. The President described this morning's meeting as wide-ranging, saying it was a good discussion, even enjoyed it. I think it helped them understand 